This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Community Matters at the three o'clock block. Three o'clock rock. Okay, we have special guest, Panos Provaduros, uh, PhD at the uh, University of Hawaii School of uh, Civil School of Engineering, but he is the chair, professor and chair of civil engineering at the okay. School of Engineering. At the College of Engineering. The College of Engineering, C-O-E. Right. Yeah. Holmes Hall. Holmes Hall, you got it. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the show, Panos. <laughs> Glad to be here. Great to have you. You're a, you're a, you're a public figure for sure. Sometimes. You, you were a big <laughs> figure in rail and still are, and, uh, and you ran for a mayor, and um, that was a very interesting uh, election and campaign. Um, and then you were involved in other important issues, and just two of them to come to mind, which I would like to talk with you today. Mm -hmm. uh, one is uh, TMT, the 30 meter telescope in uh, Mauna Kea. And the other, which is related in some ways conceptually, mm -hmm. and, and that is, uh, and that is, um, gee, I'm blocking on it. That is, oh yeah, the ferry, the super, super ferry. ferry, yes, yeah, the super ferry, because yeah. there's a parallel. There are parallels, yeah. yes. So tell us the status of TMT now. Uh, where is it now? We, you know. After a while, if you keep hearing news about a given subject, and mm -hmm. I do not exclude national politics here, you get tired of it, and you don't follow it as closely as you should have, could have, would have. Mm -hmm. um, so let's catch up. What is going on? Well, the way I understand it is that there was a contested case of the uh, state of Hawaii approvals for TMT on top of Mauna Kea. The case was heard over weeks and months by Judge May Amano in Hilo. Lots and lots of testimony. And then she took a lot of time to go through them, and she rendered her opinion that the TMT should go forward. So now it's up to the state mostly, and perhaps in small part of the county of the Big Island, to grant the permits and make it a legal project to construct. Because this is what, you know, the whatever opposition is there, opposing not so much the concept, but the construction at the top of Mauna Kea. So now it has to become a construction project, a legal project to build. Oh, my, so many, so many obstacles, so many It's chores. been a long time. I mean, even in the best of it, even if there were no contested case, no political opposition, uh, it would take a long time. There are so many permits to do anything in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. We have to be number one in, in ri ridiculous uh, obstructionist permits yes. in this state. It, it is true that we have among the most prolonged and most complicated environmental laws. I know that's not so much of the TMT, but other things that the state DOT is trying to do. Uh, for example, on Maui, there is water coming over the highway, and you know, a half a million dollar wall can do it, but we cannot do that because of so many environmental issues, so we have to build a $50 million bypass. So how you go from half a million to 50 million and how you go from solving the problem in three months to needing three years of study, two years of permits, and maybe something will start five years from now. Meanwhile, all the folks from Kahului, they need to go work at the hotels in Lahaina, and you know, 10% of the time, the highway is flooded. Same thing with TMT, uh, yeah. a lot of obstruction. Yeah, really. And of too course, bad. it's subject to that you mentioned the super ferry that they took an expeditious route to approve it, and then it came back and beat them because, hey, that shortcut really killed the project. Yeah, and I'm sure the shortcut got the blessing of Linda Lingle. It did she, direct. She, she said uh, Lehman Brothers wants a, a, a right. shortcut approach, so I'm going to make it happen for right. you guys. But she couldn't make it happen, and and somebody bit her, namely environmental uh, right. groups bit her. And, and opposing all. politicians. So yeah. it, w it was a whole thing. And all of that, you know, it, it's amazing how some big projects fail. It was only for the dock, the floating dock at Honolulu Harbor. That Nothing to trigger. do with the harbor, the trigger. That dock wasn't fully environmentally tested via reports and what have you. <laughs> that took the whole project down. It's just, I hope that TMT is not going to go that way because now, uh, they need to, uh, you know, dot the I's and cross the T's very carefully. Uh, so, th yeah, there can be protests. The prote protests can be on the side. Police and other forces will have to uh, do what they need to do. And, you know, construction has to, uh, to resume in a normal schedule. It's not a very large project. 
I mean, th they try to, to put it out there to look how magnificent it is. 30 meters is not a big deal. It's 100 feet. Yeah. It's 100 feet. Yeah. Uh, but but the, in the drawings, they make it look like so beautiful and so big that then quite a few pe people that are culturally sensitive have said, oh, this is a monstrosity. No, it's not. No. Again, 30 meters is 100 feet. I mean, really, Mauna Kea is very big for 100 feet. Yeah. If we are talking geometry now, yeah. it, it's not like they're going to take a quarter mile of the mountain or, you know, hectares or whatever. It is, when it's finished, it's not going to be a giant building. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the projections, again, they, they, they really brought forward the architectural and the science thing. They wanted to make it a, a crown jewel of the crown of the, on the top of Mauna Kea, top for science. They overdid that part. The architectural part, again, 30 meters, which is really the big disc, and then there is the surrounding it's 90 shell. feet, that's all it is. Yes. <laughs> you don't want to make them too big, because when they, you make them too big, they differentially start expanding with the sun and all, uh -huh. or the cold side, and, the, and then they start distorting. So there is limits of how big you want to make them. Again, let's stop arguing about 100 feet. Yeah. Really, it's, it's not yeah. so much for, uh, for, for the gods at the, at the top of Mount Akea. It's a little jewel there. When it's built, it's not going to be anywhere near no. a monstrosity or a huge thing. Or They've anything. been trying to get permission to mm -hmm. build this thing since, uh, I want to say, 2008 or seven, r yeah. right in there somewhere. So we're closing in on 10 years, yes. Yeah, and um, since that, I mean, at the time, uh, my understanding was that it was, it was the frontier of technology on, yeah. on this kind of uh, telescope. Um, however, since that time, I think the technology has probably moved ahead, moved, moved beyond them. Well, it would have moved, and it's always moving, and of course, that, that's the advantage, because actually, the mirror doesn't change. Nobody else has built another mirror like that, so it's not like all of a sudden we have competition from Chile. It's either here or in Chile, or the Canary Islands, whatever the three options are. Since those guys didn't go, it's the same group focused on Hawaii because they want to bring it on American soil, you know, good services, reliable. Sure. They want it. It's a big investment. They want it to be nice, protected. You know, the scientists can come in and attract out safely. the scientists. This is yeah. an attraction to the scientists. N yeah, and transportation. It means you fly safely to Honolulu. You yeah. fly safely to Hilo. You have proper road network to go up. All of these safe. These are top of the line. Uh, you know, from Japan, Canada, Europe, the U.S. They want safety. Yeah. I mean, these are all top scientists that they have fine jobs at the Princeton's, at the Berkeley's, at the University of Hawaii. Yeah. They don't want risks <laughs> in whatever islands and in whatever Chile. Uh, too cold, roads are too mountainous, too dangerous. It's not good for science. Yeah. They want to do the work comfortably and safely. And it's wonderful for the university to have this. I mean, oh, definitely. The, so as the School of Ocean Earth Science Technology, you know, is world known for mm -hmm. this kind of yeah. uh, this kind of examination of of the phenomenon around the Earth and especially here in the oceans and the mountains and the sky. And it's only natural. And and every astronomer will tell you it's only natural that the telescope be here That's and right. nowhere else. And yet, and, and if we can do that, it, it helps build our reputation, it consolidate does. our position, <laughs> corner the science, it if does. you will. And, and you know, this is what many times, it, like, like Wall Street, Mauna Kea is the Wall Street in a good sense of astronomy because there is the center of astronomy. You have the astronomers fertilizing each other, putting all the ideas and getting the most of the discoveries. If you diffuse them, Part in Greece, part in Chile, part in the Canary, there is no critical mass. Yeah. We have achieved critical mass in Hawaii. Yes. Thanks to Mauna Kea. Big thumbs up to Mauna Kea. Yes. And yes, indeed, as the governor said, and we can talk about the governor in a little bit, but the governor says he will ask for the decommission of a few of Good. Some of them really are there for pretty much training purposes, for purposes that they are marginally obsolete already. Okay. One new one, maybe one, two, or three, uh, you know, decommission. A win-win. Yeah, yeah. So let's go, let's go to the beginning. Let's go to the, the time when, I guess, when they, uh, they first got their permit. They got a mm -hmm. permit. They yes. actually got a permit mm -hmm. from DLNR. Um, and uh, at that point, the protest began. Uh, well, because there had been very subtle yeah, protests yeah, up yeah. to that point. Yeah. And the protests began, and David Ige appeared on the scene. Can you talk about that? Well, David came into the, the story. The gave, David has been a cover for only two years. Uh, this project started with uh, essentially helicopters 
Uh, people want to see Senator Renault. Senator Renault died in 2012. So this process, as you said, started in 2007. President of the university, if you remember, was Marcy Greenwood. Yes. Uh, she was sort of handpicked because she actually supported this project. And internally, they had to create a critical mass to start pushing it. Eventually, after Abercrombie, Ige came to the head because the work that Abercrombie had done had some environmental weaknesses. It wasn't really a quick path. They have done the environmental work. Unfortunately, for some reason, the dissemination wasn't sufficient. It reminds you of Rail and Mufi. Yeah, it sounds tried, like that, doesn't it? to do yeah. it quick, yeah. B but on the up and up, the, the, the environmental studies had been done, but then the community said all of a sudden, they woke up, like now with the construction of the rail, and they said, where is the environmental about that? So <laughs> they look at the environmental, and they start finding holes. Obviously, if you don't engage the community vigorously throughout the environmental process, then they read what you did and they say, well, but you haven't done that and you haven't done that and you haven't Suppose done that. Suppose I suggest to you the whole environmental issue is um, really not the point. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. It's the, the, the point for the, anyone who has opposed this. It has not really been on environmental issues. That's a, a right. bit of a, a ruse. Yes. Uh, in fact, what, what is driving this is this cultural, cultural. understanding or misunderstanding right. of what the mountain means, yeah? Well, then the EIS has a chapter on culture. That's what I meant, environmental. So it's not really... Uh, pollution, sewage, etc. But it's the, it's the, it's the uh, cultural identity and everything that is included in the EIS. It's not about traffic, minor impacts about construction. Those things were addressed, but then the bigger cultural picture was not was Except not really addressed. It took it for granted. Like you know, we have X telescopes. We add one more. What's the big deal? Yeah, I didn't understand that. Yeah. You got twelve telescopes up there. This would be number 13, mm -hmm. not to say if that's a lucky yeah, or lucky unlucky 13, number. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> and, <laughs> and all of a sudden, there's a big tumult about uh, cultural issue. Uh, 12 was OK, but the one more just sort of broke the camel's back, I guess. Yeah. And all this uh, uh, controversy comes out of the woodwork. Literally. Yeah, that, that, that was not right, and it was not really, uh, there was no science behind it. I would, have, I would have agreed with them if there was a duplication. Like, you know, we had the Subaru. Uh, phase one, and now we need a Subaru phase two. No, this is a completely different type of thing. So scientifically, it's very well founded. So it's needed there. It doesn't yeah, duplicate yeah, work. Yeah. And as I said, it's part of the deal now that one or two or maybe three will be decommissioned. So we're going to drop back to uh, 10 or 11. Again, a win-win. So, you know, and from the beginning, when I saw it, when I understood the impact on science, what it does for jobs, what it does for construction, what it does for permanent jobs, for the University of Hawaii, Hilo, and all. Why are we opposing that? I mean, Hawaiian guys would be proud to have that diamond on top of it. It's, it's really not desecrating, it's, it's beautifying. It's something we can be proud of, That's really right. proud. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. So, okay, David Ige gets involved, and, th and this is really precious. Yes. He gets involved early on. I think it was when the protests started, which would have been after the permit um, you know, That's was right. originally granted. Uh, and he arrives on the scene. He's just been elected, just takes office. Yes. And he makes some statements. And I want to do a cliffhanger, if you don't mind, panelists. Mm. I want to take a break now. Okay. <laughs> and when we come back from this break, we're going to talk about what D David Ige said and how it affected the project and how that has all cast a shadow on, on things Sounds subsequent. Good. That's Panos Prevaduros. Uh, he is professor and chair of, of civil engineering at the University of Hawaii uh, College of Engineering. And we're talking about TMT, still a very important issue and one not without controversy. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. They said I could play, so any chance to play at all. You know, that's my life. I love music. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire 
all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m. and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Community Matters, and we're talking with uh, Panos Prevaduras, who is professor and chair of civil engineering at the College of Engineering at UH Manoa. And we're talking about TMT, which is a, an issue that needs further discussion because mm -hmm. it is still in controversy. Okay, so David Ige comes, he makes some statements. What does he say? Why does he say that? And what effect does it have? Well, he actually said that uh, we need to be very sensitive about what we are doing here. Uh, it was an opportunity to actually uh, push for the project. I was hoping that, you know, he will uh, try to not sell it, try to represent it, because that's what it is, a gigantic step forward for science, a gigantic step forward for the UH, and a very big step forward for the state of Hawaii overall, and the county, the island of the big island, because of the jobs and other economic opportunities. If they didn't care about the science, they were positives for their community. P.S. P.S. I like to add that I have been to the Big Island. Uh, I know people on the Big Island in that area mm -hmm. and around that area, and I have talked to them. And most of the people I have talked to support okay. the yeah. project. Yeah. It's only a handful of protesters. Right. The rest of the people that you talk to are universally in favor of the project. Yeah. yeah. So, th so people have common sense. They they know what a good thing when a good thing is that they want it. But uh, Ige, unfortunately, uh, it was the early days, it's part of his character. He was quite soft about it. And he opened the avenue for a contested case. Yeah, let me add too that there was, uh, following his remarks and the, the, the report made about that in the local paper, and uh, I guess the Star Advertiser mm -hmm. at the time, uh, the New York Times wrote an editorial about David Ige, mm -hmm. and uh, I they criticized him for being amorphous about it. They criticized, yeah. and they said, will he please take a position on this one way or the other? Mm -hmm. uh, because not taking a position, and this, this is so in the case of Donald Trump and the issue yeah. in Charlottesville, mm -hmm. not taking a position leaves a vacuum, a vacuum yeah. and then people fill the vacuum with whatever they want, they and want. it's usually bad. Yes, and, and that's what happened, and you know, that uh, really, uh, gave a uh, hold to the opposition because they said, hey, the governor is, going, no, is not going for this thing. So, well, the governor is not for it. Well, he is okay. He didn't say he's opposed, but he's not for it. Therefore, there is a clear case for us to be against it. And we may even convince him to be against it. So he, he actually created something out of nothing. And, you know, a group of 50 became 250, and it's still clearly under 1,000 people, and the Big Island has over 100,000 people. So as you said, it's a, it's a very small minority. They're quite vocal. They're vocal over the, the media and, and the Facebook and what have you. But uh, at some point, and now it's a good point, Judge uh, Maya Mano said, enough already. I heard everything, and this is something that should be Well, followed. it went to the Supreme Court. Yes. Right around the time that David Ige spoke, it, yeah, was, that's it went right. to the Supreme Court. The Supreme yes, Court and said, to, no, yeah. you, know, you, you can't issue the permit. Mm -hmm. before the contested case okay. hearing is resolved. Yes. You can't run parallel tracks. You have right. to do one for the other. I, right. I thought that was pretty technical myself yeah. and that they could have ruled the other way just, 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 just as, as well. well. Mm -hmm. um, but, but they chose to stop it, just the way they chose to stop the Super Ferry on yes. two separate occasions. Right. Uh, in any event, okay, so now uh, Ricky Mayamano is appointed and she serves as a, what, an arbitrator, was yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, so to determine this by agreement to determine this, this, um, this, this issue. What happens? Well, uh, now there are some undercurrents that they say that she may have had conflict. Uh, so they may be building a case to, uh, for further delays to essentially partially or fully invalidate her opinion. So it's, it's not a clear cut. This is another point and in time that you should step in and say enough is enough. Uh, we have had you know, months of hearings and all, the, the, the conflict, whatever it exists, is minuscule. 
everybody has a conflict in Hawaii. We're a state of <laughs> 1.2 million people. We pretty much know everybody. I mean, directly, I have nothing to do with TMT, but I've been employed by the UH for 27 years. Automatically, I have a conflict. Whatever I'm saying now here is, is conflicted, right? Indirectly, I already bought the thing with TMT. Come on. Uh, therefore, I'm, I'm incapable to testify anywhere because I have 27 years of UH So you bias. never get anything done anything that way. Anything done. I mean, I mean, clearly. I mean, how can we find people, you know, in the hui of engineers, lawyers, and all that, they don't have any conflict. It's like, you know, we never lived in Hawaii. It's impossible. <laughs> she's born and raised in Hilo. I mean, obviously, she has all the conflict in the world. She, she's trying to support her island the way she... So let, well, was, she a good, was she a good pick, though? She was a reasonable pick. I didn't have a big, uh, you know, a, a lot of this matter is, is legal, so I try to not step into that. I, I don't have a clear understanding. She gave of it a lot of time, a lot yes. of attention. She listened to, I don't know, hundreds of witnesses who repeated themselves ad, ad nauseum, saying right. the same thing. Same thing, yeah. And yeah. it was all rhetoric. It was not really evidence anyway. Um, but was she too patient? Well, it's good that she was too patient because nobody can, can, can accuse her now that she took a Not shortcut. Not being patient enough, yeah. <laughs> no more shortcuts. There was no shortcut. Nobody was uh, muzzled. <laughs> well, the other legal strata, if there are any, they shouldn't be finding any evidence that there was any wrongdoing, so clear the path already. Okay. I think coming, uh, well, next year is, you know, only four months away, but we should be going and, you know, issue them the permit. So 2018 would be a good year for them because... I believe that if we don't make any clear decisions by the end of the year, uh, the consortium may, may decide to jump. It, it's been, you know, there is so much that Hawaii can do, you know, being so obstinate and, you know, yeah. delay tactics yeah, and everything. Yeah. Enough already. I mean, yeah. it's just... So the status is that she has ruled after a long, long, long right. hearing process. And uh, as I recall, it was a long decision, too. Yes, she really thought decision. it through. Yeah and dealt with all the, the possible you know, ap appeal points that right. might, might have come out of it. And so now it's been, now the problem raised by the Supreme Court has been resolved, uh, that the parties, or rather the TMT uh, consortium is ready to go ahead, mm -hmm. um, and they have to do the next thing. The next thing is to get all the permits. That's right, because they have the money. They are not dependent in any yeah. of our money. Well, which is very significant. What about what about the the Azores or whatever uh, other yeah. venue they were considering? They entered into an agreement a few months ago, uh, and they have I, I wouldn't say threatened, but the word on the street has been for a long time that they were going to go somewhere else. What's their present thinking? I think that they they have already started pre-planning at one or two sites because they they need to uh, have a plan B at this point. Uh, plan A is not so secure for them, and. Obviously, uh, like uh, we know that you know, you cannot business cannot trust Hawaii. They they can, and this is like they approach it like a business. They have the investment. They need to do it. Another black uh, eye. For it's us. it's another black eye. So it's uh, yes, it's necessary when you try to do something in Hawaii. You have to have a plan B. So now, now the TMT group has to go and get a number of permits. Mm -hmm. It's not so easy because permits take a long time. It puts further stress on the timeline for TMT right. and there's other options. Um, but uh, the opposition continues. They don't necessarily abide by Ricky May's decision. Right. Um, and they, they are out and trying to, what, find problems with the permit applications for the construction. Might, might. And then I think, the, the, I think that some of the problems will be down at the street. I think the permits will be issued. Again, there is nothing fundamentally wrong with the structure. The structure is relatively simple. It's not meant, it's not a hotel that's going to have a lot of people. It's, 20, 30 people that they will be regularly, you know, taking turns to occupy minimum environmental impact. Uh, the foot, uh, the, the, the size of the property is reasonable. Constructability is reasonable. So a lot of these things can happen once they start moving. So what are they going to do is blockades. They'll try to do the blockades because everything Still, is Still, even important. now? Well, they, try, they tried on Maui too uh, for sure, the repairs the, uh, on Haleakala. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, anything goes wrong, we should expect that. I was happy to see that they protested, but also the police took the, took the line they should, and they removed the protesters. It, it, it strikes me that the protesters never give up. That they, yes. when the law is decided, the decision is made, yeah. it's settled as a matter of law, yeah. they still protest. They uh, never stop. It's essentially conduct unbecoming because, you know, well, we had tens of thousands of protesters against the rail, 
none of us chained ourselves to go stop uh, you know <laughs> the bulldozers are out there i mean it's you have to realize it's a civilized society right we're supposed to act like that <laughs> to respect, and, and respe respect decisions and institutions <laughs> uh, so i mean they they do disrespect to their own uh, culture and heritage you know yeah, yeah, yeah. okay so um so what happens now we're in we're in the in the circuit making the circuit for permits mm -hmm. And the permits hopefully will be granted, right. and that would permit construction to go forward. I know it's not going to be right away. It's going to be years anyway before they get all the permits. Yes. Uh, I should hope that uh, DLNR is not going to request an updated EIS, or the updated EIS has been happening, and it's ready for uh, you know final ah. signature. Uh, because if for some reason now uh, the EG government begins to, to ask, ask for things anew, oh. Uh, that could be a significant delay because you know you, you cannot come up with an EIS within a couple of months, or six months plus. Sure, lots of delay. Yeah. So I mean, I, what I inherited what you said is that he has not yet bought into this. He has not yet come out and said, "I yes, I support the project. I respect the decisions that have been made. I think it should go forward." Not said that. Probably he doesn't want to step into the DLNR territory because right now the DLNR has to make the final determinations and brief him. Um, it should be a decision should be coming up fairly quickly. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be from the top because then it doesn't look good. It looks like an executive decision. No, we have to mm -hmm. follow process. That's why I'm saying that I'm uh, hopefully we don't have to repeat process and whatever EIS is, quick updates with some lessons learned, put a new date on it and sign it. Well, I think this is uh, we're at a we're at an important point because yes, we've lost ground. We've mm -hmm. had another black eye, but we could we could redeem ourselves right. on this. Uh, what do you think will happen? And and flip side, what will happen if we somehow bollocks this project up again? Well, it's going to be a permanent black eye if we lose the TMT. I mean, the the scientific world knows what is going on, and if we manage after all the steps we took. Uh, to completely botch it one time, particularly after the May Amano decision. All these months of hearings, the judge prefers an opinion that says TMT should move forward, and we found ways, political, cultural, or whatever you want to call it, to stop it and, you know, essentially raise enough obstacles to make it so unproductive and undesirable that they moved elsewhere. Yeah. What's your message? There's camera. There's camera yeah. th what? two, uh, four. Well, uh, I know there's a camera out there somewhere. Well, DLNR, Mayor Harry Kim, very respectable gentleman. I think he's in favor. And the governor, DLNR, mayor and governor, get together, get it done. Facilitate the permits. The, the public wants it. The contested case is power ready. Supreme Court says have the contested case. So we did that. Let's pull out the stops now and get it done. It's a small project. Remember, folks, 30-meter telescope is 100 feet, really, on a giant mountain that has, uh, you know, other telescopes, some of which may be decommissioned. So actually, the net impact would be positive for the mountain. It's a win-win. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I sure hope we do it. We, I hope we won't have another contested case with... Uh, the necessity of, yeah. of appointing a judge like Ricky May yet again, because that yeah. would take a lot of time. Um, but is it possible that we will? Is it possible that this will all be transmuted into yet another contested case hearing? Uh, every time the, before the, after, immediately after the signature of the revised DIS, the window open to contest it. Oh my That's goodness. always the path. That's all, you have to accept an EIS, meaning you, the governor, yeah. or the department has to accept an EIS for you and I or anybody to sue. That's why, for example, during the rail, we had a time that beyond before this, we can't sue because not, but once you accept something, you sue for it. So, so one last question, yeah. panels, and that is, you know, you, you ran for mayor, mm -hmm. you ran on a, a rail issue there. Um, you've been, uh, you know, a, a citizen journalist and a mm -hmm. spokesman. You have m many, mm, uh, community ideas and positions to advance. Why are you, as an engineer and the chair and professor in the College of Engineering, why are you interested in this? Uh, because it's scientific infrastructure. It's my baby too. 
<laughs> engineers build all the scientific paper, so <laughs> I, I want to see that one. It's, it's yeah. a nice jewel of infrastructure, and we want to have a part in it. Okay, I do too. Thank very you, Very good. Panos. You're very welcome. Panos Provenduros. Aloha. Thank you.